Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. This is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. Joined today uh, on this lovely Tuesday morning is Miss Lisa Lockmagay. Lisa, say hello to all the lovely people out there. Hello. Alright guys, so if you're serious how it's going to go, okay? I'm going to run down some stories, uh, starting off with some Marvel and DC news. Then we move into Star Wars and Harry Potter if there is any. Then we go to Miscellaneous. We're going to discuss how we feel about these stories and then you guys chime back on social media or the uh, gmail account let us know what you think as well so without further ado you just want to get on with this show and get going let's go that's right we're in a hurry guys we're, we're gonna, gonna go, go see rogue one again again for a second viewing so so we gotta get going on this so without further ado uh let's get right into it now there is no marvel news this week so we're gonna skip right to the dc news ben affleck the oscar winner and current Caped Crusader, spoke with the New York Times in regards to the solo Batman film that is allegedly in the works and how he's been working on the script and he's pretty much almost done, although he's not in a hurry. He also talked a little about why he took the part of Batman as well, saying, quote, I'm a real believer in not reverse engineering projects to meet a window or a date. So that's why we're that's what we're doing. I'm really mindful of that. I'm not in a hurry to jam a mediocre film down the pipe. He said one of the main reasons he took the job of Batman is because of his role in 2003's Daredevil. He said, quote, Part of it was I wanted for once to get one of these movies and do it right, to do a good version. I hate Daredevil so much. It frustrated me. The Netflix show does really cool stuff. I feel like there was, for us, to do that character... We never uh, got that kind of stuff right. I want to do one of these movies and sort of get it right. And, of course, he goes in talking more about possibly a potential release date for the Batman solo film. Uh, and talking to Variety, he said, we're going to begin shooting spring of 2017, hopefully. And then we'll probably see the movie drop somewhere 2018. Uh, now, this, of course, is going to be a little bit of a shakeup in the DC lineup because now there's rumors that Warner Brothers is, first off, they've dropped the Flash release date at all after losing two, potentially three directors. I'm not surprised there. Uh, but they're also talking about moving back in the Justice League sequel a little bit to make way for the Batman movie. So, again, this is more change ups, changes in their lineup in regards to their DC films. Um... Of course, Lisa, I'm going to go and ask you, what do you think this means for the DC properties? And what do you think of uh, Ben Affleck's comments about how he's handling the Batman film? I mean, I like his comments. I think that that's exactly what DC needs, is to quit trying to jam things that aren't ready yet. They just need to make it good. Like, find a good script. Like, wait till you have a good story, and then go from there. So, I mean, I like those comments, and I think that, you know, he seems to care a lot about the character, so surely yeah. he can do a good job. But... Overall, I don't know how I feel about the story. I don't think... I mean, I know that people are all like, Batman, woohoo! But I just... We already have so many Batman movies. Like, I would rather... And, and you know, the, the Chris Nolan Batmans were not that long ago. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just wish that they would concentrate more on the other characters now and like let's do a good flash movie like let's get that shit figured out well they've got they're losing directors on that movie i so know but there so. must be a reason why which is what i'm saying they just don't have their shit together well good which is what worries me even still with the batman one because it's all the same people who are ultimately responsible for these movies so sure ben affleck can do his best to write a good script and try to get a good movie made but he's not the one in the end who's running the show the big, you know what well, I mean? The overall picture. Th that's kind of the question is, who is running the show? Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, when you look at, um, you know, compared to the Marvel, which they're always comparing the Marvel, you have Kevin Feige on Marvel's side, who is the, you know, the main guy, the buck stops with him. And, yeah, he, he answers to the guys at Disney's now, Disney now as well. But, you know, they trust him enough, much like... Kathleen Kennedy with Lucasfilm, you know. Yeah, they're the ones with the creative yeah, control. Exactly. And then, then, of course, you know, they answered it, the guys up in Disney as well. But, you know, they trust these people enough, Kevin Feige, Kathleen Kennedy enough, to know what's best for the franchise and to get the best out of the movies. Um, we've seen a lot of changes within the, the DC film franchise or who's in charge now. Um, allegedly, Jeff Johns is running quite a bit of the ship, although I don't feel like the big wings at Warner Brothers would give him that much power to be that of a Kevin Feige, perhaps. Mm -hmm. 
I would like to see that just because, like I said, I've, I've been reading Jeff Johns for a while. I love his storytelling. I think it'd be great, but I don't think it's it's still not running as smoothly as it will be. One of the things, I guess, um, in regards to directors is you have a lot of these times where you have these directors come in and with these franchises, the studios will kind of push them around a little bit. You know, they tell them what to do. We saw it with uh, Josh Trank with Fantastic Four where he just, you know, opened up about how much the studio was on him and really wouldn't make it, let him make the movie that he wanted to make as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lot of what's going on with The Flash as well, where the studio has a vision of Flash and what they want to do, and the directors, you know, aren't kind of lining up with that, or maybe they're finding it difficult to do what the studio wants. They don't, they're not going to give them that freedom to do what they want. Ben Affleck, on the hand, is already a star, okay? He's already, you know, made three or four critically... You know, acclaimed films, he's an Oscar winner, writer. Um, they can't push Ben Affleck around, okay? Right now, Ben Affleck is pretty much their golden boy. Not only is he, is he turning out Oscar films for them, but he's also the the star of, you know, their biggest, you know, franchise to date. So the difference is, is that when Ben Affleck says, hey, uh, I'm going to do it at my own pace. I'm going to make sure I get it right. The studio's like, okay, okay, no problem. Just, just do what you want. Whereas everyone else, like a lesser known director, they'd be like, no, 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 you do it. You get it done, what we tell you to do, and you're going to do it how we want to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think there's a difference in that regards to saying. I don't think he has as much power as you think he does. I think he does. does. Studio. I think he does. I mean, people are like, they want him to like take control of the whole thing, and I'm like, I don't want him to do that. They're I like, don't know. People want that. I don't know that the studio. I think you are giving him way too much credit. I, I, I mean, I, I like Ben Affleck. I mean, I know, and I think he has done some good things, too, but he's also done a lot of junk. He's not like Steven Spielberg, where I can see he could just go to the studio and be like, F you, I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> he's not Scorsese. He's still just Ben Affleck. He's... I mean, I'm not saying I don't think that someday he'll get to that point where he could basically say to the studio, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it like this, even though this is DC, this is a big deal. Like, I'm just going to do what I want to do, and you can just suck it. Like, <laughs> I don't think he has that level of power yet. I think, yes, that they probably are going to give him a little more leeway than they would give just some random director coming on yeah, not a guy to direct a film. Himself. Right, but I still don't think that they're just going to say to him, oh yeah, you can make it whatever you want. Whatever story you want, whatever plot you want, go for it. I don't think that they're... They're not going to do exactly like that, but they're going to give him a lot more... Like, you know, um, with some other films, you know, studios might like hold their hand and totally just walk them through, mm-hmm. whereas they give them a little more freedom. Like, yeah, a little more freedom, with, I will you know, agree with. with. With, with directors like Ben Affleck and, say, Zack Snyder, they've had successful films, okay? Several successful films. Uh, whereas someone, you know, who might come in and try to direct a Flash or an Aquaman or something like that, they maybe had one known film or so that, you know, people like, but it wasn't a huge, huge blockbuster. So they're still going to tread more lightly with them than they would an Affleck or a Snyder. Well, I'm not disagreeing with that. That's just not what you were saying a I few think, minutes I, ago. I, well, I'm saying that I think Ben Affleck has quite a bit of control of his Batman film. He's the star, the writer, and the director. Obviously, the studio trusts him enough to do what he wants. I don't I don't completely agree. I partially agree. I just don't completely agree with Plus, you. Plus, I think, uh, you know, the, the fact is, you know, yeah, Ben Affleck has made some bad movies in the past, of which he never wrote or directed. He just had to star in. And starring in a film, you have very little control over it, uh, you know, with the, the dialogue and the editing and all that stuff. So for him, he's got complete control of this film. So again, the studio can't say, oh, no, we don't like that. Because again, he's 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 got all three the the trifecta of it, you know. He's he this is his movie, you know. And whether it's going to be good or bad, I mean, it, it rests on Ben Affleck's shoulders. I don't think, from what I know of Ben Affleck of recently and the kind of films he's come out with and what we saw of him in Batman v Superman, I don't see him uh, turning out a bad Batman film. In fact, I'm very much looking forward to the kind of Batman film he's going to come out with. I'm not saying I think it'll be bad. I'm just saying. I don't think that they're just going to... When you have a DC universe and there is allegedly some kind of... Drama. Overarching plan for the DC universe, they couldn't possibly go in and just be like, yeah, you just go for it. I think we've established that Warner Brothers has no idea what they're doing. They're they're very reactionary, of course. I also agree with that, but... So, I mean, I could go... I could get in my... Tell you what, let's go into the second DC story, and then I'm going to tell you my big old rant about the Warner Brothers... um, DC properties, okay? So, according to The Hollywood Reporter, uh, Suicide Squad director David Ayer will reunite with Margot Robbie 
in a sequel slash spin-off to Suicide Squad, starring the females of uh, the DC Universe, uh, said that maybe Batgirl and the Birds of Prey are going to show up, as well as Catwoman and Poison Ivy. And people are calling this, as of right now, Gotham City Sirens, which is a title of a former DC Comics series where it kind of primarily featured the uh, the females of Batman's rogues gallery and also the heroes as well, as well as Batgirl, Black Canary, Huntress, all those is, uh, to go in there too. Now, as of right now, we don't have a release yet for, date for this film, but it's said that uh, they are fast-tracking the film. It's also said that possibly Will Smith is going to make an appearance as Deadshot in the film. Order is also, also being looked at to have his own spinoff film as well. Uh, Will Smith said, I'd definitely love to be in it. I love Margot Robbie. I would like to do whatever she wants to do. So there you have it. Uh, more kind of news coming out of the DC film new area. I know you haven't seen Suicide Squad yet. No. What do you think about a possibly Harley Quinn or even Deadshot spinoff film or, you know, a female, complete female DC character? What do you think about a film like this? I don't know. I mean, I think that Harley Quinn is a supporting character. Yes. So, I don't know how I feel about her having a solo film. That character, I don't know enough about Deadshot to really have an opinion, but I think that they could probably make it work just because Will Smith is... I mean, he still has star power. He may not always make great movies, but I think that he, I, I, from what I've heard, he he was pretty good. Yeah, he was in good. Suicide Squad. His, his new movie that just came out, that Collateral Beauty, mm -hmm. not getting good reviews though. Oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> anyway, but the, I just feel like this just goes right back to what we always say about DC. Like you said before, they are reactionary. They don't have a vision for what they're trying to do. It's like they make a movie, they hear one good thing about one character, and they're like, oh, okay, that's the one. We're going to take that character now and make a movie. You know, like, they just, just, it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, so in regards to this, a Gotham City Sirens sounds interesting to me. Um, if the villains are featured in the background, you, you got to focus on the heroes still. I mean, got Batgirl, Black Canary, Huntress, the Birds of Prey, that would be a good movie if they're facing off against, you know, Catwoman and Harley Quinn and stuff like that. If those are the villains, I don't want Harley Quinn to be in the center of the film. We got a film already where Harley Quinn and Deadshot are the main characters. It's called Suicide Squad, okay? And people said, yeah, they like the, the, those characters in the film, which is why they're doing a possible spinoff. But going into my rant here, that's the problem with DC. Like you said, they don't have a cohesive... Um, thought and they don't, they don't have a they look like they don't have a game plan and if they are they're changing it between each play look at again going back to marvel uh before avengers age of ultron came out marvel invited a bunch of the press over and they laid out the movie plan for the next what five or six years going all the way through uh the the fourth avengers film and they haven't once faltered from that, okay? No matter what people have said about other films or, you know, how they reacted, they're still on that game plan because Kevin Feige um, says or has talked about how each film feeds into the bigger narrative of the Marvel Universe. There's one cohesive story, which, of course, we know is all going to come to head in that fourth Avengers film where you're going to have all the Avengers characters and the Guardians of the Galaxy, and they're all going to face off against Thanos, and it's an overall story arc with all that. I have yet to see an overall story arc from the DC Universe. I mean, by the time we got to the fifth film or fourth film in the um, in the Marvel Studio films, we saw what the overall was going to be. It was going to be Thanos. It was going to be, you know, the Avengers. Yeah, exactly. The Infinity Stones, the Infinity Gauntlet, all that. We're at the coming up on the fifth film, I think now for, um, yeah, we're in one, two, three. I think we're at three, right? Yeah, three. We're going to be the fourth one now, and I have yet to see kind of what the big story arc is. Maybe in Justice League we'll get a better idea of it, but I'm not seeing where it's all going. You know, five, six years down the road, plus the fact that Warner Brothers has already changed is or is constantly changing their lineup because originally they did what Marvel did. They came out and they said, all right, guys, we're going to come out with Justice League and then we're doing Aquaman and then we're doing Flash and then we're doing Cyborg. And I'm like, that's completely changed, mm -hmm. okay? Nothing that they've said aside from maybe an Aquaman is still on the table. Flash is in limbo. 
nobody's talking about Cyborg anymore. Which is weird that they're not, that they are already kind of taking those off the table because the, you know, it hasn't even come out yet. Yeah. You know, like, the Justice League movie, it's not even like, you know, it's like, sure, they, I would have, if it was me, I would have, like, put Justice League movie out, uh -huh. then see how it does, and then, but, or, or just, yeah, if they had a plan, I mean, if, once we see the movie, it makes more sense that people are going to be talking about yeah. those other characters. Like, why, like, table it already? We don't have, we haven't even met these characters yeah. yet. I mean, they came out with this whole plan, and that's like the Marvel plan, before Batman v Superman did. Mm -hmm. And when Batman v Superman had bad reviews, and then their next film, Suicide Squad, had bad mm -hmm. reviews, obviously you have to change something up. But they're still, like I said, I mean, they've, they've got new leadership in there, allegedly. They're kind of changing the tone of it a bit. So I think maybe they're starting to realize they need a more cohesive and more solid long-term plan. With this story here in regards to, you know, the Margot Robbie doing her Gotham Sirens, this reeks of another knee-jerk, knee you know, mm -hmm. reaction to, oh, they like her, or let's get a movie of her in the, in the works, you know, mm -hmm. oh, they like Deadshot, let's get a Deadshot movie in the works, you know. Well, it's and it just is refocusing again around Batman. Uh -huh. Like, they can't get away from Batman. Well, that, that's... I've said a lot for a long time now. I've said that Warner Brothers has no faith in any other characters yeah. in the DC universe except Batman, yeah. and that's why they haven't been making anything good except mm -hmm. Batman movies for the last twenty years. Yeah, I mean, because exactly, it's like as soon as they start planning to, you know, go off in different directions and concentrate on other characters, they go back to Batman. I think it's. I mean, for me, I'm just going to spitball here and, you know, give them my, my thoughts about that. Of course, like I said, they have no faith in any of my Batman because they don't know how to approach the rest of the DC characters. Like, all the rest of the DC characters are gods, essentially, you know? Mm -hmm. You have Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Aquaman. These are, you know, almost going back to, to Greek gods as well. So, so to try to humanize them, to make them relatable, to make them entertaining, uh, I know it can sometimes be difficult. I mean, they're a comic. When I read a, a Superman comic book, if, there, if the writer of that Superman comic book doesn't get or have a good angle about what makes Superman good, just the fact that he's powerful, it's a, it's a wasted story, you know? And I think that's the same thing with movies. If you don't get that angle or you don't get why this character is appealing or what humanizes this character and makes him, you know, good, then it's going to be a waste. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping, again, with Wonder Woman, that's the, good, that's the next test I got. I don't understand go. why that's so hard, though. I mean, the Marvel Universe did it with Thor, True, true. I mean, they made Thor and Loki. I mean, they're basically gods, and they made them very relatable. They did. They did. They, they made that kind of... And that, so I'm talking about, um, you know, with Patrick Wilson being cast as Orm, mm -hmm. as Aquaman's brother, I very much think that Aquaman film has to follow that same pace of the Thor movie, where you have these guys from a, a far a different, you know, mystical land that have, you know, great power... You need to humanize them and show them that they're just like every other family that, you know, brothers that fight. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, get them down to that level. And again, with Wonder Woman, same thing. Themyscira, you know, she's got all this power. She's related to the Greek gods. You got to find that way to humanize her a little bit and make her relatable. And I just hope they've done it because, I mean, really, if they, if they fumble with Wonder Woman, I don't think Justice League is going to make it very, very well. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I mean, it, it might have the 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 tag of having again another appearance of Ben Affleck as Batman, who's probably going to be the lead in that film. Uh, but if, yeah, I mean, at the end, we're not doing this to hate on them. We we want these films to be good. I mean, I've been reading DC comics my whole life. I've been waiting for a Justice League movie. I want them to be good, but they're just not treating it with the same. Um, care that i believe marvel has treated their characters mm -hmm. so okay all right so let's jump off of dc news we've got a little bit of star wars news to talk about now uh looks like a familiar character is going to be popping up on rebels coming up in season three uh in a recent promotion poster that is seen at toys r us it depicts the character of saw guerrera showing up in some upcoming episodes of Star Wars Rebels. Now, the character was first introduced in Star Wars Clone Wars in a couple episodes of Season 5, and most recently he popped up on in Rogue One last week, played by Forrest Whitaker. Uh, but from this uh, poster we saw, it looks like he's going to be showing up in Rebels. Uh, now, as we know, Rebels takes place a few years 
before the events of Row 1 and Episode 4. So it's going to be, you know, a little older, Saw Guerrero. I'm curious to see how it's going to go. And we also know from Row 1 now that Saw actually raised the character of Jin Erso, played by Felicity Jones. So this is going to take place probably after that, when he's become more of a uh, liability to, to the Rebellion than an asset. Or maybe they're going to tell the story of how he actually... You know, got on the outs with the rebellion. I don't know, Lisa. What do you think about seeing Saul pop up in Rebels? I I don't know. I mean, he wasn't my favorite part of Rogue One. Yeah. Um. I mean, he was. I thought he was weird. He he was one of the things that I I wasn't a huge fan of in Rogue One. Um, the bits that I've seen him in. Um, the Clone Wars? Yeah. And I'm not sure if I've gotten through all the bits that he's in. Yeah, he was just in that one storyline, I think. The, yeah. the Onderon storyline? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I've seen all him. I mean, I thought his character was interesting in there. Um, so, I mean, anything... I mean, I, I don't... I like Rebels a lot. Like, I like everything that they've done. So, if they feel like it's going to fit for the story to have him in there, then sure. I'm, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does seem kind of weird, though, because, I mean, based on, like, Rogue One... He wasn't really involved with them all that much. He was like he I said, kind of went off on his own. Yeah, so. like I said, he became more. You know, he became more rebellious. I guess you could use the word, or you know, he was more outrageous. Yeah, he was like an offshoot of them. He wasn't, yeah. wasn't working with the rebellion. Yeah, anymore. he was going getting more radical. I think is what they said. Right, which I think was you could see based on what happened with yeah. him in Rogue One, the way that his character was portrayed in that. He definitely yeah. seemed a little bit more like. Uh -huh. Radical is a good word. Yeah. So I don't know how it would fit into Rebels, but... Well, like I said, I think it'd be a good idea. I mean, like I said, uh, what if this is... Remember, because we're still maybe a year or two away from Rogue One. What if this is a story about how, you know, maybe he go, the ghost goes to see him or they're going on a mission with him mm -hmm. and they realize that, hey, this guy, you know, is no longer good for the Rebellion and maybe it's the crew of the ghost that kind of kick him out, oh, perhaps even, you know, feed into the storyline there. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I don't think he gets kicked out. I think he goes on his, on own? his own accord. Yeah. Quite, quite possibly. And takes, it looks like he takes a group of people with him that kind of are a little bit more willing to do... To do maybe a little bit more questionable things. Yeah, yeah. So. And this kind of feeds into what I saw on Rebels Recon um, in the last episode where they were talking about what to look forward to in Season 3 in the second half. And Pablo Hidalgo, uh, Lucasfilm story teller, he said there's going to be a lot of tie-ins into Rogue One now, now that Rogue One has come out and people have seen it. Uh, one of them being the Geonosis storyline. And then this one probably is another thing that he hinted at in regards mm -hmm. to seeing Saw Guerrera. Whether he's going to show up just for an episode, maybe it's going to be a couple episodes, we don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. So, but I think it'll be good. Uh, the character I'd like to explore a little more, I, you know they're going to come out with comics and novels mm -hmm. about him and Jin, of course, you know, mm -hmm. growing up and yeah. all that stuff. You know that's all coming. So mm -hmm. we have not seen the last of Saul, even though he mm -hmm. might not make it to the next film. Uh, yeah, but, true. Um, yeah, I, we definitely have not seen the last of this character. Mm -hmm. As well. So. Okay, I have a, a, a side story. Okay. Spoilers, full spoilers. Okay, full we, spoilers. We already did a people. spoilers review of Rogue One, guys. So this you, is this is full Star Wars spoilers. So if you don't want to know, then just turn it off for a few minutes. And, Go for it. So okay, so you know with Rogue One, you know we were talking about how with all those characters, you know we kind of knew that they were all going to die yeah. because they're not in a New Hope. Yes. And so it would make sense that they must have died. In some way, getting the Death Star plan. Gotcha. So here's my thought. So all of the people who are in Rebels, uh -huh. we don't see them in the rest of the movies. Uh -huh. So do you think the show is going to show them die? Do you think like Rebels is going to end and they're all going to be dead? I don't think they're all. Okay, here my theory is they're not all going to die. Okay, um, it's like it goes back to Ahsoka. Okay, where when Clone Wars first started. You have this character of Ahsoka Tano. And we're like, okay, well, she's not in episode three, so she's going to die. Mm -hmm. Okay? And what happened? They did it in a way where she left the Jedi Order, was in hiding for several years, and then popped back up after the events of episode three. I have no doubt in my mind that some, if not most, of the crew of the ghosts is going to die. I think a couple are going to make it out. One or two probably will make it out. And go into hiding, though? I and mean, go I just... into hiding. I mean, come on. After, they are a family, okay? And what's going to happen to them is, I have a feeling it's going to be so tragic, like as Return of the Dark Side, 
and possibly killing some of them himself, even, um, it's going to be so tragic that they're going to need time. They're going to be like, no, I can't fight anymore. I have to go off and, you know, kind of like what Obi-Wan did. Mm -hmm. You know, he, 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 his whole world came crumbling down, okay? So but he was been, still on a mission. He, was he still wasn't on a truly mission, running away. But he, he was on a mission. But he volunteered for that mission. Why? Because it was going to be seclusion, mm -hmm. time for him to kind of, Well, and he know. felt responsible. Of course. That, so that, he felt, I think he felt a huge responsibility to take care of Anakin's son. Uh-huh. Because he felt, I mean, ultimately yeah. responsible for what happened to Anakin. Which is why, here, so, uh, in, in that same sense... So I can see, like, something bad Kanan. happening to Ezra and Kanan just kind of so, running away. I mean, Hera is the one I can't see. I think Hera has to die because I can't see her just quitting the okay. fight. She's been fighting all her she's been, life. She's been the he's been the leader behind the, the crew of the ghosts going forward. I mean... Mm -hmm. I mean, even before that. I mean, her yeah. dad was the leader of the all the whole movement... For yeah. all the Twi'leks. Like, yeah, so and Ryloth, I just, yeah. Yeah, and Ryloth. So I just don't see her being... I think she's going to have to die. Uh -huh. Because otherwise, I just don't see that she would just be like, meh. Exactly. I, I totally agree with that. And honestly, I, it's, it's been my theory that she's the first to go. Mm -hmm. You think so? I think because... But that would tear everyone apart. That's exactly why she's the first to go. Because hmm. once she goes, it all falls apart. Yeah. That's what I think it is. I just was thinking that that might be too deep. For this type of show, I think. At, remember, I mean, we're going, we're going pretty dark here. I mean, much like how Clone Wars matured mm -hmm. as the seasons went on, that's what's happened to Rebels too. As mm -hmm. uh, much like in Clone Wars, as Ahsoka got older, we got more mature. Mm -hmm. Same thing, we're happening with Rebels. As Ezra gets older, we're going more mature. I mean, mm -hmm. look yeah, at but that. it's still Disney XD. Look like, at, how far can we on, go? Come on, look at that scene in the in the premiere with Ezra mm -hmm. and the Walker. Yeah, I know. That was pretty freaking dark. Yeah, I, I know, I know. You're right, you're right. So, I just, I just, I, I don't know. We'll see. I know, I know. They, they're not going to go, hold on, but I think it's going to be that. Um, I, just, I have a couple more theories in regards to, you know, what could play out and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think that in regards to Rebels, I think, you know, if any of them make it out, it's going to be a huge big deal. They're going to be like, okay, I need time to recoup. And, mm -hmm. you know, it can't be like Kane and Ezra. They're Jedi. You can't have those type of characters just not be there as well. Right. But I could see like a Zeb or Sabine who are just, you know, just basically fighters is mm -hmm. what they are. Yeah. I can see them, you know, in the background not being at the forefront of the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. So, I'm I mean, we know Rex makes it out, right? Because he's a Jedi, as mm -hmm. they have told us. <laughs> yes, I know. It's a shoehorn. We all know it's a shoehorn in there. Just, uh, you know, please fans. But in any event... Um, yeah, so, okay, guys, if you haven't seen Rogue One, um, we're obviously spoiling a few stuff for you, uh, but go on and see it. Uh, we're going to go see it for a second time here as soon as we're done with this podcast. It's awesome. So, all right, so moving on in Star Wars news, Adam Driver, who is going to be starring in the upcoming Episode 8 film, spoke with Cinema Blend in regards to the promotion for Episode 8, and he feels that maybe they should just skip marketing altogether for the film. He said, quote, I think that'd be bold. I'd love it. Then no one would know anything. The less people know, I feel like, the more exciting, the more of an event it is. He went on to talk about, uh, in other forms of media, such as uh, Beyonce, when she dropped her album a few years back and had no one saw it coming. And it was uh, kind of more of an event that way, more shocking, more popular as well. Now, the closest we've gotten to that in regards to films is last year we had 10 Cloverfield Lane, which no one even knew anything about them. They didn't know it was coming until about two months before the first trailer dropped. And everyone was like, what is this? No one ever heard anything about it. No one heard about a production, director, stars, nothing like that. It just kind of dropped. Um, and that's kind of the closest thing we've gotten to that since then. I think what Driver's hinting at is that in regards to in this day and age with spoilers and leaks and stuff like that, It'd be better if they just kind of shut everything down altogether so that it'd be a complete shock and no one would know anything as well. Uh, now, I did uh, was listening to last week's, on Friday's, uh, Collider Movie Talk, and they were ragging on this one film reviewer, film YouTube pundit, who actually gave a spoiler review, posted it online three days before Rogue One came out. And they were saying just how stupid and horrible it is that a person would do something like that. Now, of course, people have the option not to watch it, but for someone to put something out there like that as in a high such a high profile film as Rogue One, they thought it was irresponsible and just kind of an assholeish move to do. Mm -hmm. Uh episode four is set to hit theaters eight. December Huh? Episode eight. Episode eight? You said four. Okay, there we go. Episode eight is set to, set to hit theaters December fifteenth. 
2017, less than a year from now, and it's going to be directed by Ryan Johnson, starring Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Adam Driver, and all those guys. So, what do you think about Driver's comments? I think that's a really good idea. Oh, wow, really? I, I think, think, number one, they don't need to publicize it. Bottom line. There is not one person that is going to go see that movie just because they saw a trailer. Everyone who's going to go see it already knows they're going to go see it. I mean, really. There are some movies that just don't need to publicize. because, And I think Star Wars films, like especially the saga films, are those. They're going to have... What they put... If they put out zero trailers, zero information, there is still going to be uh, the internet breaking down the day tickets go on sale, period. Yep. So there's not really, and I, you know how I am. I hate all the like trying to guess what. You hate, what, the, you hate the fan theories. I hate the fan theories because we don't have any idea. We just don't. So what? if there's nothing to fuel the fan theories, I think it would be super awesome to just go into it not knowing anything. My anticipation is already like at peak level. Granted, I think that it might drive us all insane to like not, not know, know anything. anything. Oh, yeah. But I, it, it's going to almost, I think it almost make it that much more exciting the day you go. Because like you like, you know what I mean? Like you won't even have anything to like visualize. There's not going to be any kind of desert planet where everyone's stipulating what planet it is for months beforehand when we have no fucking clue. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think it would be cool. I like that comment. Go Adam Driver. I'm gonna They're not going to do I'm it. I'm going to disagree. Because, yeah, you compare it to say 10 Cloverfield Lane. Let's compare the budget to Ted Cloverfield Lane, okay? This movie, Episode 8, is hundreds of millions of dollars and is a staple for not only Lucasfilm, but Disney as well. They need this movie to skyrocket. They need this movie, they need every person on the planet to go see this movie twice, and, you know, to make it, make it successful. And leaving that up to, you know, some like, oh, here it is, here's your movie, you haven't seen any of it, go for it. No, oh, no, that is the most no. ridiculous thing I've ever heard. There is this movie does not need to publicize. Okay, but they it, release those trailers for people like us who wait for them. They do not release those okay. trailers. Star Wars trailers are not to entice people who weren't interested in seeing it. It's for people like us just to just to fuel the flames. We're already gonna see okay, it. Okay, so we're gonna go see it. What about everyone else? Everyone else, I'm saying these trailers there, don't there, entice people. There are who, people who are who choose not to go see Rogue One. Because first off, it's not a continuation. Rogue of the, One is different. Is not, Rogue One is, it different. is different. I would never it is say different. not to publicize. It is Rogue different, one. but there are so many people out there, like people that I work with, that you know me. I talk about Star Wars all the time. Mm -hmm. They know I talk about it at work all the time. There are people, even up till the week beforehand, they're like, "Oh, there's the Star Wars movie coming out. Is this going to be the sequel? What is this one?" You know, they don't know. Yeah, I know that. So again. We just I just talked about how this film needs to be successful. And it will be. And if be, the common regardless. Joe does not know the film is coming out at least a, a month or two ahead of time, it's not going to work. I don't think that's true at all. The common Joe doesn't choose what movie they're going to go see two months ahead of time. They sit at home one day and they're like, what's showing tonight? Oh, let's go see the new Star Wars movie. You're the only one. Okay, you're not the only one. But people like us... Given how many people were in line for tickets? People like us no. are the only ones that literally plan our schedules months ahead of time to make sure that we're not working to go to movies like this. We're the freaks. average We're freaks. I'm just saying, the average Joe doesn't need to know two months ahead of time what day it's coming out. Because they're just going to sit together one night and be like, I think we should all go see Star Wars this weekend. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's go. Two things. And you know that that's true. Two things. You know that's two true. Things. One... Star Wars is a kind of movie where families do plan a little bit ahead of time. Maybe not months ahead of time, but probably about a week or so ahead of time. Mm -hmm. They plan to be like, hey, let's get the family together and we'll see Star Wars. Yes. Okay? Two, again, this is just me. Just, I've got to go off a little bit here. I don't get people. Every time I go to the movies, every once in a while, there's someone standing there at the ticket office looking at the movies being like, which movie should I go see? A lot more people do that than you How think. How the hell do you go to the movie theater and have no idea what you're going to go see? Because most people don't look online for trailers. Most people don't watch TV with commercials anymore. But so they don't see movie trailers. How do you know if a movie looks appealing if you haven't seen a commercial or a trailer? Not everybody gives a shit about I that. It's the same people so who throw buy books based on the cover. What the looks like the cover. Those people are idiots. Well, there's a lot of those people 
people out there. That's what I'm trying to say. I think this movie, if if episode eight literally did not have one trailer come out before the movie, and they just had like movie posters at like theaters and stuff, or movie posters online just announcing that the movie is coming, mm -hmm. but didn't have one trailer. They would make equal amounts of money than no, without they it. Wouldn't. They wouldn't. Make equal, they would no way make equal amount of money. They may not no. make the same amount of money opening weekend, but as long as it's mm -hmm. good, they would make just okay. as much money. I'm in agreement that there shouldn't be as much marketing, you know, to make it where it's everywhere. Like, uh, example of, say, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2, okay? By the time that movie came out, there had been, like, eight trailers marketing out the wazoo. I was so sick of the film by the time it came out. In regards to, yeah, I want to see, maybe give me two, maybe three. Give me a, give me a teaser trailer and two trailers. I'm of, I'm of the trailer plan. Give me a teaser trailer six months ahead of time. Give me an actual trailer three months ahead of time. And then give me another trailer one month ahead of time. That's all I need. You give me that, I'd be happy. But again, this goes into, it's Star Wars. It's a franchise. It's a totally different tool. They need to make their money because they spend a bunch of money off it. And they know how many people love this film. They know how many people... By them posting a picture on Instagram of a blaster, just a blaster from the set, it immediately goes viral. And exactly why they don't them. need to have exactly, trailers. No, but, then, but then, let's say like someone like me, I post that online. My friend who's not as big a Star Wars fan as I am says... Oh wow! Well, this is the link from there. Oh, there's a new Star Wars movie coming out, and that puts it in their head because yeah, but they don't need because, the trailer. Because that's what I'm saying. Because I shared it, but no, they. You're do defending need my point, right? No, now. I'm not defending. I'm just putting the idea in their head. They put the idea in their head, then they see the trailer and be like, "Oh yeah, I do want to go see that." They wouldn't even need the trailer. That's my point. They, People don't go see a Star Wars movie because of the trailer. They, they go, go see, see a Star, Star Wars, Wars movie, movie because it's a Star but Wars movie. But they need to know that it's coming out still. Yeah, but they don't need a trailer to know that it's coming yes, out. Yes, they do. No, they don't. How else do they do that? Movie posters. You just said pictures from the set, sharing pictures it, and blasters. It wants, it, a picture doesn't it doesn't have the dates on it though. When you share it, people would share it. You, I can't believe that you really think in this day and age, with the shit that people put on Facebook and everywhere no. else, that people would not know that it was okay, coming out but without here's a trailer. What it is. They need to hype it and stuff like that. Like I say, they're, they now studios are smart now. They know that there are hyper fanboys out there like me and probably you that will post anything in regards to the film. So mm -hmm. all they do is give us a little bit and then we post that and share that and then those other people know it, okay? And that's what it is. They're relying on us to get the hype. They want it at maximum hype. Right, but they the don't time, need a trailer to do that. They, the, But it helps the hype. It helps the hype. I just, I'm saying. I know. They need I, to be, by the time December 15th or 14th comes out, they need the entire world foaming to go see this film. And if there was no trailer, they'd be even more foaming. No, they wouldn't be foaming. Because they wouldn't know anything they'd be about like, it. They'd be like, what if it sucks? You know, the, the average People fan, are going to say that anyway. The average fan would be like, I don't know. I haven't seen anything about it. Maybe they're trying to hide it, you know? That is not what would happen. That would totally be what I completely disagree with I, I completely, this. okay. I'm not going to say it's not going to make money without any marketing, but I'm saying it would not, it would make Maybe half of what it would. That is that. so ridiculous. No, it isn't. No, okay, guys, let us know. Let us know what you think, because I think we can go on with this conversation <laughs> forever. So I want you guys. This is a very uh, highly uh, heated argument here or debate. So I want you guys to hit this back on social media. Let us know what you think. Are you keen on the idea of no marketing and, and or versus extra marketing or today's common marketing? Uh, what do you think would help the film better? So let's just step off of that because mm -hmm. we can go on with that forever. Okay? Yeah, I was going to say too, I think not about this issue perhaps, but I think we should restructure the show and start with the Star Wars stories because we have much better conversations about the Star well, Wars stories. because we're both stories. very heated on Star exactly. Wars. Exactly. So I feel like we should start with the Star Wars stories now. So if people don't want to hear the rest, they can turn it off. Well, I guess, but, but it's the whole point. See, they have to get through the other stuff to get to the Star Wars. That's how it is. That's how, you know, it's like when a Marvel or DC promotes their movies on like Gotham or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but they don't tell you when it's going to go and they show it at the very end. They know you got to watch the entire episode of their piece of crap show just to get the thing you actually tuned in for. <laughs> That's how it is, see? All right, so let's step off of Star Wars, kind of. This next one probably is going to be really short because I don't have much to say and I doubt you do either. Uh, ben Middleson, who is in a little film called Rogue One, a Star Wars. Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn, I said that right, didn't I? No. I swear I said that. Anyway, uh, he is said to be cast as the Sheriff of Nottingham in the coming up Robin Hood Origins film. Uh, a deal is said to be finalized, and he's going to be joining Taron Egerton from Kingsman, who is going to be playing Robin Hood. 
You got uh, Jamie Foxx as Little John and Jamie Dorian, who is in that Fifty Shades crappier movie, is going to be playing Will Scarlet. This is all according to Variety, in which the storyline is going to center around Robin Hood as a war-hardened crusader who joins a Moorish commander in an ambitious revolt against the British monarchy. In the works, of course, two there always are. Uh, <laughs> you have this one set. To, uh, so, uh, look at this cast. Ben Middleton, Karen Egerton, Jamie Foxx. Yeah, it, it wasn't one. my favorite one. And the Russell Crowe one sucked ass, which I know I you wouldn't, th- wouldn't see it in general because it no, got real. And they're already comparing him to the late Alan Rickman, of course. Right. As well. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, that I mean, I think it- Prince of Thieves as well. Um, the Russell Crowe one sucked. So bad, too. So, it stinks. I don't think. And I can definitely see him as Sheriff Nottingham. I think he pulled off great. Of course, he's going to be compared to the film, actually. But um, given that it's not in the notes here, I don't think it's anyone actually will the movie. All right, so stepping off into more miscellaneous news. Uh, I know Lisa's going to love this next one I told her about earlier. Peaks slant to it. The show will explore themes of love, family, high school, and H. Arrow, Supergirl, and DC's Legends Tomorrow. Well, it was announced a couple days ago that a next one. So it says that uh, she is not only set to reconnect with Archie and her husband. What is she in another, like, Soap opera. She was in that show about the teenager who got sec- pregnant. The Secret Ladies, John Hughes film. Mm-hmm. So, what do you feel about this? I don't understand this show. It's made a, a show that was like a new version of Twin Peaks and made all these characters other names. Like, what? why? Why? Like, why? I don't understand. You just described my feelings on X3 The Last Stand. <laughs> Whatever. We're not talking about that. We're talking about <laughs> this. I mean, I, that's what I don't get about this. Like, it doesn't sound like it's about like Archie at all. It just happens to have all the characters from Archie. It's like when we were talking about that the Gem movie when that came out. <laughs> you know? It's like the movie wasn't about Gem at all. It's like they took a character, an old character that no one really knew or cared about all that much anymore, put it into a movie that wasn't at all like the character. Like they thought that having it be gem was gonna sell it to people, mm-hmm. even though the plot wasn't at all gem. That's what this sounds like to me. So they're trying to get Archie fans to watch it, but it's not at all like an Archie comic. So I don't understand. I'm confused. Okay, well, um, and I don't care about Molly Ringwald being in it at all. Okay, all right. In that regard, so uh, for me, I I want to watch it. Actually, I'm gonna check it out uh, just because you know I, I I like good teen soaps. You know what I mean. Uh, they're the, uh, yeah, they're One Tree one, Hill. Right, one right, Tree I Hill. I, hey, I started off early with uh, 90210, watching that with my mom. Uh, Dawson's Creek, The O.C., or well, the first two seasons of The O.C., the rest of it sucked. And then um, One Tree Hill, which, again, the last couple seasons, that sucked. But anyway, but, you know, I like a good teen soap. I like a good coming-of-age story. Uh, I'm going to check it out because I do like the, the Archie lore as well. I don't think this is going to be the Archie it's, lore. It's, it's, it's going to be it's CWI's Archie is what it is. They got to intensify the, mm-hmm. the drama of it all. Yeah, so it's going to have the characters. So, so I don't think the Archie lore it, it is going to be involved It'll probably all. be a little ridiculous, but uh, I'm going to check it out. You know, I like to give it a fair shot. And then, I mean, hey, I give Gossip Girl a fair shot. And uh, I didn't like that at all, so I dropped it. So I'm going to give this a fair shot. And if I don't like it, I'll drop it. And if not, you can just hear me talk about it Yay. forever and ever. Can't wait. All right. Last story of the day, guys. Uh, big trailer dropped yesterday. I guess a big trailer. Uh, that Warner Brothers and Alcon Entertainment have unveiled their first teaser trailer for the upcoming Blade Runner film, Blade 2049. Now, this film is set 30 years after the events of the first film, the new Blade Runner, played by Ryan Gosling, unearths a long-buried secret that has the potential to plunge what's left of society into chaos. Now, Ryan Gosling uh, plays the character of Kay, whose discovery leads him on a quest to find Rick, Rick Deckard, who is the uh, first, um, excuse me, the first Blade Runner from the original film, played by Harrison Ford, and who has been missing for the last 30 years. The film is set to come out October 6, 2017, and also star Robin Wright, Dave Bautista, and Jared Leto. The film is going to be directed by Dennis Vanoff, which I know I totally butchered that, uh, but he's the guy who directed uh, Arrival, Sicario, and Prisoners. I love Sicario and Prisoners. I haven't heard Arrival, but I've heard, seen Arrival, but I've heard really good things about it. Um, it's going to be produced by Wrigley Scott, who directed the first Blade Runner film. Uh, last night, Lisa and I checked out this announcement trailer. Not a lot to it. You just kind of see a couple of visuals. You got to see Ryan Gosling. Harrison Ford Got to see Harrison Ford as well. I think it's going to be one of those um, 
kind of the Force Awakens style things where Ryan Gosling is the star of it. And then, you know, Harrison Ford is in the background as the mentor. I imagine Harrison Ford's character is probably going to die as well in the film, too, <laughs> to make way for the next generation, because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, in the next Indiana Jones film, we'll see the next thing. Harrison Ford is just going to be that neck, that character that's going to die in the next couple of I feel like that might be films. kind of ominous for him as a man. Right. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> I never get that, too. Like, you have older actors or actresses who are, you know, of elderly age, and they play a character in the TV or film where that character is so old they die. And I'm like, how spooky yeah, is that? I, That's exactly. very spooky. How does that make them feel? I can't imagine. It's very good. It's not good for their psyche, definitely. No so, way. I don't know. Anyway, this trailer, yeah, it wasn't a lot to it. It definitely, I think what it was is for, you know, hardcore Blade Runner fans or just sci-fi fans in general, just to get jazzed for the upcoming film. It's October, so it's still, you know, a little less than a, a year away. Uh, quite a bit, and it is just kind of an announcement trailer. So overall, I don't think it's anything to get excited about. I think it does kind of, if anything, like you said, hey, I need to go back and watch the original Blade Runner. Well, not go back. I've never seen the original okay. Blade Runner. Well, and me, I have thought for a while that I yeah. should watch it. And someone like me who has seen it, but it's been a long time, be like, maybe I should watch it again, you know? So probably sometime within the next few months, we'll sit down and watch Blade Runner, uh, just so we can both get refreshed. And I think that's kind of what the announcement trailer was all about. Just going to be able to be like, hey, there's a new Blade Runner with Ryan Gosling, and they want you to go back and watch the original one before you do, so... Any events, uh, that's it, guys. Anything else you want to talk about, Lisa? No. Nope. nope. I got to get in the shower so we can get on to some Rogue One goodness. Ooh, buddy. I can't wait to see those last five minutes again of that film. All right, guys. So uh, let us know what you think on anything. What did you think of the Blade Runner um, trailer? What did you think of Molly Ringwald? And, of course, please let us know where you stand on Star Wars marketing. Do you think that we need all those trailers and all that other jazz for the film to be successful or not? And, of course, let us know what you thought of all of our DC talk. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Uh, just let us know, okay? DaySpringDiscussion.gmail.com. Hit us up on the Facebook group or on Twitter. You can find me personally on Instagram and Twitter as well. And I think that's going to be it for now, guys. So uh, next week we'll be back. It'll be a post-Christmas show. I'm going to try to get um, I don't think I'll be able to do a show next it's, week. Uh, next it's Tuesday. You won't be able to, but it's all right. I've already planned for that. Yeah. I've okay. already planned for that. Same. I know you're going to leave. I know you're at work. Uh, mainly, I want to bring your mom on to talk about the Doctor Who Christmas special because mm -hmm. I know she's all jazzed about that. Of course she We is. don't talk enough Doctor Who on this show as well. I know this. Uh, just like we don't talk enough Walking Dead, but man, those are two shows. We don't that, talk any Walking Dead. Well, we used to when Josh was here because oh. he was the Walking Dead guy, but I don't watch Walking Dead or Doctor Who, and I try to you know be diverse as I can with this show to appeal to the most people, but... Sometimes I fall short, so that's why I like to have your mom on or try to get Joshy in here to talk about the things that I have no knowledge of. So, in any event, guys, uh, so we'll hopefully get some uh, Doctor Who going on next show, so tune in for that as well. Until then, may the Force be with us all.